Hi, I'm AJ. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current subscriber, make sure you tap that down below. Also hit the like button because you're gonna like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Today we're gonna talk about the seven money rules from the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Now this book is a story format which basically uses parables to talk about how to invest money, how to save money, and how to handle your money just in general. The first money rule is to start thy purse to fattening. In other words, what you wanna do is start saving money. So if you have a job or if you own your own business, you wanna make sure that you're putting 10% of your money away into saving. By making a decision on a percentage that you're gonna put away into savings or into investments, uh, we're gonna talk about specifically just putting the 10% away and not spending it for now. One, that reduces the amount of money that you can spend. So you're already reducing your expenses just by taking that 10% and putting it to the side. By putting away 10% of your money, you're already making the decision that you're gonna spend less money than you make. Which goes into rule number two, control die expenditures. Now expenditures is just a fancy way of saying expenses or purchasing items, basically being a consumer. If you don't control how and where you spend your money, then you're gonna end up using credit, you're gonna borrow more than you really need to, and you're gonna buy things that you don't need. So you wanna focus, before you even get into investing, you wanna focus on how you spend your money and reducing the things that you spend your money on, finding discounts, making sure that you're not buying off of impulse, because that's usually when you're gonna end up spending more money than you need to, or than what you budgeted for. Rule number three is make thy gold multiply. Now, of course they use gold. This is a really old book. It's an old story. And so nowadays, most people aren't carrying around gold. Now you can purchase gold through the stock market. You're not actually physically getting the gold, but you can invest in gold through the stock market. But for the most part, what I recommend for people to do is to invest in a total stock market ETF. That way you're investing your money into all of the public businesses within the United States. Now you can also invest in real estate or find other ways to flip your money or to create multiple income streams. That way your money is making money while you're asleep, 24 hours a day. It has the opportunity to make more money. So make that gold multiply. Rule number four is guard thy treasures from loss. So once you have your money saved, you of course don't want to lose out on that money. So you wanna be very careful in what you're investing in. But what's even better is to not invest in individual stocks or investing in something that you don't know about. Do your own research. If you're gonna invest in the stock market, don't invest in individual stocks because you increase the chances that you could lose money versus when you're investing in a total stock market ETF you're reducing the risk of losing money because you're investing in the US economy as a whole versus one business that could go bankrupt. Another thing that it focuses on is that when you are investing, you invest in something that has a, a smaller risk of losing your original investment. So if you put in $1,000, what are the chances are that you're gonna actually lose that full $100 versus you know maybe five or 10% of it in all likelihood and what is the, the gain that you're gonna receive from it. So there are a lot of things that are high risk and high reward. So there's a high chance that you could lose all of your money, but the rewards of taking that risk are very high. You don't wanna get in a high risk, high reward uh, investment. You wanna reduce your risk as much as you can while still being able to gain from the money that you save. Rule number five is make thy dwelling a profitable investment. Now, when they say dwelling, that means your home, that's where you live. So one, you would have to purchase a home in order, in order to make thy dwelling an investment. Renting is not an investment. Now there are some places in the country where renting would be the best bet for you because the prices of homes are so inflated in a, maybe a place like San Francisco or New York or some areas of uh, DC. But for the most part, you wanna make sure that when you are purchasing a home, you're not purchasing more than you need space-wise and you're not spending more money than you need by getting a, a large mortgage that 
you can pay now, you can afford it, but you don't really have a lot of leeway to make mistakes or if you were to lose your job, you don't have any emergency savings. So it's really important that when you are investing in your dwelling, you're making sure that you're getting a good deal and you're making sure that the cost of owning the home is either less than it would be for renting or not much higher than it would be for renting. A rule that you can get from the book called The Millionaire Next Door is to not purchase a home that costs more than two times your family or your household income. So if your household income is $50,000, you shouldn't purchase a home that's over $100,000 if your household income is $100,000, you shouldn't purchase a home that's over $200,000. And the reasoning behind that is that if you do, there's a higher chance that if an emergency happens, you won't be able to take care of that emergency because you won't have the extra money to take care of those emergencies or you won't have the extra money to save so that you can prepare for any emergencies that may happen and things will happen. Rule number six is ensure a future income. So as we get older, things become more expensive for us, especially when you think about healthcare. That is one of the major expenses for people that are in their 50s and 60s and even older. Uh, healthcare is a major expense, especially once you get towards the typical retirement age of 60 plus. And so you wanna make sure that you have income that will not only be able to take care of your health, but if you don't have a house paid off, that'll be able to pay for that. Hopefully you have a home paid off by the time that you do retire and that can pay for your day-to-day -day expenses. So a way to think about your future income is think about how much money you need to live on a yearly basis. You multiply that by 25 or you multiply that by 30 and that's the amount of money that you need in order to follow the 4% rule, which is what, is what a lot of people in the financial independence retire early community that's the number that they use or the percentage that they use to determine how much money they'll need in retirement in order to live for basically forever. Now the 4% rule is based on the assumption and the estimation that you'll get about 8% return in the stock market as that is the historical average over the past about 90 years. So even with the degradation of your money via inflation, with the gains of the stock market and with only pulling 4% of the money out of your account, what you have saved or what you have invested in the stock market, once you hit the retirement age, you'll be able to pull 4% for many years to come. And there's a very low likelihood, assuming the average, average gain continues over time, that you'll run out of money. Now, another way to ensure a future income is to make sure that you have insurance. So that's life insurance, uh, disability in case you were to get injured and lose your job. That way you can replace your income when you're not working. Or if you were to pass away, you can replace your income through a life insurance plan that will go to your remaining family members, especially if they're depending on your income currently. Now, rule number seven, the last rule is to increase your ability to earn. Now, one of the great ways to increase your ability to earn is through education. And education doesn't have to be through the traditional sense of going to college, but that is one way that you can increase your ability to earn. On average, college graduates make more money than high school graduates. However, business owners make more money than the average college graduate that is not a business owner. So education doesn't have to be in college, it can be you purchasing books to learn a new skill. There are applications and websites where you can actually take free university courses. Uh, EDX is one of those platforms as well as Coursera. So even without paying for college, you can get a college education by using apps like the apps I just mentioned, going to their websites, or even just purchasing books through Amazon or your local bookstore. And you can also learn from other people who are already doing the thing that you want to do. And you can learn directly from someone that's already a professional in that space. In addition to education, another way to increase your ability to earn is to create multiple streams of income that don't require your presence. So investing in the stock market, like a total stock market ETF fund, that is actually earning you money but you don't have to physically do anything once you put the money into the stock market. All you have to do is sit back, the stock market will do what it does, and over time, if you do this continuously, 
you can make money literally while you're asleep. Or if you have an investment property, maybe you're, you have a rental property, that's something where, again, you can make money while you're asleep. Now, I personally haven't gotten into real estate as of yet, but that's something that I plan to work on. I'm mostly focused on the stock market currently. Now, other examples of ways that you can increase your ability to earn is by getting rate raises. So wherever you work now, find out what you need to do from your managers or other people that are successful in that company and figure out what they did to get raises, what they did to move into higher positions. And if you're in a company where there is either isn't room to grow or you're not able to grow within that company, you can always switch jobs as well. Sometimes switching, going to a different company or going to a different job type can increase your income faster than getting a raise in your current position. All right, so we talked about the seven money rules from The Richest Man in Babylon. Make sure you check out that book. I'll have a link to Amazon in the description if you would like to purchase that book. Also check out my video where I talked about a free way that you can access audiobooks because if you can get the book for free, that's an infinite return on your investment of $0. All right, guys, thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I really appreciate it. If you're not a current subscriber, the subscribe button is down below. Make sure you tap that. Also hit the like button so, because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. Again, thanks for taking this time out of your day. You guys have a great day. Thanks.